you've seen mm -hmm. in, in uh, gay men and not in most of the mm -hmm. uh, not in most of the uh, patients who are affected with AIDS. Mm -hmm. Then uh, patients also may have uh, anal carcinoma, carcinoma of the anus also, which may be related to uh, viruses such as the papilloma virus, which may mm -hmm. then go rampant, mm -hmm. or which may be a co-infecting agent mm -hmm. at the time that one is infected with, uh, with the AIDS virus. So AIDS, in a real sense, creates an almost an entirely new uh, uh, area for mm -hmm. uh, for your department for people who are in, involved in, in the study of cancer is that that's right it cr creates an entirely new uh, area for all of medicine mm -hmm. I think right well now now let's look at uh, during this uh, last five minutes here let's mm -hmm. look at some of the uh, most recent research mm -hmm. uh, dealing with cancer what can you tell our audience this morning in terms of uh, certainly if we can't find a, uh, you know we found cures for some areas and we've done quite well in terms of research in other areas but uh, what's the, uh, where are we on the cutting edge okay. in terms of what we're doing about cancer today? Well, I'd like to look at it from two perspectives. One is from the perspective of prevention and early detection. Obviously, one always has a better outcome and result if you never have a disease. So if you can prevent, then of course, the public health implications are great. Mm -hmm. If one can detect early, and that's why we promote screening programs with uh, uh, with uh, mammography, et cetera, which is a very useful tool and very effective uh, toward, uh, and has been demonstrated to decrease the, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the mortality uh, because it detects the disease much earlier uh, in, uh, in uh, prospective studies in the past, mm -hmm. then that is very effective. Uh, the, the, the interesting and cutting edge things relate to, number one, uh, the um, molecular biology which uh, seeks to find um, seeks to find uh, uh, cancer suppression genes or mutations mm -hmm. of those mm -hmm. in certain groups or families of individuals who may have uh, increased susceptibility for the development of uh, mm -hmm. cancers such as uh, breast and uh, uh, ov uh, ovarian and endometrial and so forth mm -hmm. and that tends to run in families. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that is exciting, and if you can detect that, especially, then mm -hmm. you will be able to then uh, s segregate out that group of people and then intensely monitor them uh, uh, so that you can intervene at an earlier time. That's very interesting. Second thing has to do with gene therapy, which is never, mm -hmm. not very far mm -hmm. with regards to cancer, but uh, in some other uh, areas uh, we have uh, been able to demonstrate, especially like uh, immunodeficiency, mm -hmm. uh, where putting in uh, 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 adenine deaminase gene or, mm -hmm. or something of that sort, utilizing a virus as a vector, mm -hmm. one is able to then cause the functioning mm -hmm. of the individual cells. And so for a number of these diseases, this uh, genetic manipulation mm -hmm. Uh, it's sort of on the horizon, and, and this will be demonstrated to be effective. You might even be, it's, it's uh, certainly very conceivable that we'll do that in sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. For example, we'll make that person into a sickle cell trait person. Now, sickle cell, uh, is that a cancer? And, and, and that mm -hmm. is a disease that uh, impacts uh, African Americans uh, almost uh, entirely, is that, is that correct? Well, it impacts uh, African Americans, and uh, because most of us come from West Africa, uh, most mm -hmm. of the... Uh, most of our group come from West Africa. But uh, sickle cell and those hemoglobinopathies occurred in other populations, such as along the Mediterranean also, mm -hmm. over in West India, and also there are similar hemoglobinopathies occurring in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's, a, it's an, a problem which causes, a ab it's an abnormal hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the molecule that carries oxygen in the red cell. And this hemoglobin happens to make the red cell very rigid Mm -hmm. so that it can't pass through the tiny mm -hmm. blood vessels and mm -hmm. that's what causes all of the problems and the cells break down and the person becomes anemic and so forth. Now doctor, uh, not only are you the uh, head of the uh, Department of Oncology at Meharry Medical College, mm -hmm. but you're also a surgeon uh, at uh, in, in internal medicine, internal medicine right, at right. Uh, uh, General Hospital. Right, that's right. Now uh, we do know that these two hospitals uh, are in the process of merging and et cetera. That's correct. What do you think that that will do in terms of uh, your ability perhaps to uh, better uh, deal with what you're doing with the uh, combination of those two uh, medical facilities? I think that it offers great, possibility, uh, great prospects for the future.
for us particularly and for Nashville and the country in general, that's because it brings uh, some uh, resources and interest of the, at the city level and federal level too, and uh, from the private level, from our sector, together to deal with many problems that many other individuals and institutions have neglected in dealing with. And I think that we'll be able to really uh, do some wonderful things in the future because of these kinds of, um, uh, of, of uh, mergers and these kinds of relationships which are developing. Uh, we are going through another very uh, uh, time of great mm -hmm. fundamental change. Very good. And let me thank you, Dr. Hardy, for uh, taking the time to bring that excellent information uh, about uh, blacks and cancer and some of the other things that uh, we've uh, talked about uh, this morning. And let me encourage you to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.